machine learning, artificial intelligence. We've heard them on a couple of panels. These are basically, there are buzzwords that are everywhere right now. After ChatGPT and Google Bard, there's no way of avoiding them anymore. Every tech product has them. But for many of us, they're quite nebulous concepts. What do they actually mean? What do they mean applied for us? And that's really the goal that I'm trying to get closer to you, um, bring a bit closer to you in the next 15 minutes. Um, make these concepts a bit more tangible, and particularly we're going to focus on decision support versus decision intelligence. What are they and what do they actually mean? And what is this really transformational impact that they can have on the revenue processes in a hotel? And for that, we're going to be starting with an example of the automotive industry. We are in the famous country of the Autobahn after all. And I'm going to take you back on a short walk down memory lane to the, some of these good memories of our youth years. Who failed their driving test the first time around? I did. And I know that it's actually, it seems like we're quite online here. In 2022, actually 43% of all students in Germany failed their driving test. And driving is hard, right? And it isn't just hard, it stays hard. It takes three to five months to get a license in Germany. And still then, we have 2.3 million car accidents in Germany each year. That's four and a half per minute. And looking at the timer, that means nine since I started talking. No? So even though we have this very good selection process of who's allowed to drive a car, it's a really difficult thing. And what makes it so hard? In Germany, it might not be as hard as the Southeast Asian landscape that we're seeing here, but there are hundreds of tactical decisions that we need to make at every moment in time. Is it a cat or a black cat or a plastic bag that's on, gonna enter our, the road there from the right that I potentially need to avoid? Is it uh, the kid that just peeked their head aside from that, uh, behind that car that I'm saying there, are they going to follow the ball that just rolled into the road and do I need to brake to avoid them? Is it a stop sign or the Burger King drive through logo? There's hundreds of things that we continuously need to keep in mind. It's a really task, hard thing to do. Now, second question. Who thinks they will be fully self-driving cars on public roads within the next five years? Does the rest think they won't be? Now, I'm asking a bit of a trick question here, actually, because there are already. What you see here is that since 2017, a company called Waymo, they were formerly known as Google's self-driving car pro uh, project, has fully autonomous, publicly accessible robo-taxis available in the Phoenix East Valley. And I'm not talking about Tesla-style automation. You're sitting behind the wheel and the car will drive itself on the motorway. I'm talking, no per the driver's seat is empty. Completely empty, you call the taxi, it arrives, you get in, it drives you there, you get out. Completely automatic. Um, Waymo did this first in 2015, actually, not fully on public roads, but that's where they had their first self-driving car. That car actually did not even have a steering wheel at all. Since the end of 2022, it's also available in San Francisco. And since 2020, they're actually deploying that uh, technology um, on Waymo Via, which is steering trucks. Now, hundreds of, uh, not I don't know, trucking that well, but a lot of tons of weight that are actually being carried around by that technology. Waymo currently has 800, ro 800 cars on the road that are driving fully autonomously. Now, from a computer science perspective, these are insane, absolutely insane volumes of data that are being crunched there every moment. These have, like, as you can see, they look a bit like a police car, and older people sometimes mistake them for it. They have cameras, LiDAR sensors, radars. This car actually can see as far as three football fields wide in 300, like, basically in 360 degrees, and it's crunching this data with two onboard computers. So it's not some big magic supercomputer somewhere in a server center. This is all on this car. Now, so even though driving is extremely hard, a lot of us have failed that driving test, computers are doing it. And they're doing it right now, and they are doing it very, very well. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Am I trying to convince you to invest into Alphabet shares or convince you, we heard it on the panel before, of some iRobot-style future that is going to be happening in the next couple of years? No, that's not the point. But the point is change is happening, and it's happening right now. Applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning are becoming more and more prominent everywhere in our everyday world, particularly since ChatGPT is around. Everybody has seen them, and they've been all over the news. The world is moving from decision support to decision intelligence. But what are the two, and how do they actually differ? 
Let's go back to the example of the automotive industry. What is decision support? Decision support, the best comparable for this, would be the cruise control, or Tempomat, how we would call it in Germany. It's an automation of a task that a human would usually do, and it works very well. It's also been around forever. Cruise control, as we know it, since the 1940s, in fact. But the problem is, it's set up by a human. It will only ever change its way of execution once the human that steers it changes its way of institution. That's why we need to constantly adjust it. We need to break ourselves before the corner. We need to adjust the speed limit in case the speed limit changes. If you live like me in the UK, you need to avoid an abundance of potholes that seem to be potting up, uh, popping up from everywhere. Basically, only the system will learn once the human learns. That's the thing about decision support systems. They're mainly focused on control and explainability. I can control it, and I can exactly explain why certain changes are happening. Unfortunately, they don't focus very well on outcomes. What do we have in decision intelligence? In decision intelligence, it's basically a fully autonomous car. It collects all the important data points within the car space, other participants of traffic, um, linings on the road, humans, speed, speed signs, everything basically collects all these important data points, intelligently evaluates them, and then takes an action, evaluates that action, and learns from it so it can take a better action into the future. Going back to the Waymo example, they narrowed that down to three easy words, sense, solve, go. And this is really what a decision intelligence system does. It's focused on strategy and outcomes rather than control and explainability. It gives you the opportunity to think about how to actually get to your goal. It's focusing on performance and financial results, not tactical moves and controls. Decision intelligence really is the commercial application of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And the good news is, autonomous driving is infinitely harder from a computer science perspective than revenue management and forecasting. So what is the impact that this will have on hospitality? So the research that we've done in our ownership company, Flyer Labs, actually tells us that there's 10 to 20% revenue leakage in the hospitality industry. And that's caused by an abundance of factors. Mostly insufficient granularity in decision making, manual reactive workflows, missing reporting and failure to identify risks and opportunities in advance. This is then mostly paired with scarce resources, still coming out of COVID, stretched remit, revenue managers are doing more than they ever did before, and highly complex analytical challenges. Now, hotels are dealing with highly dynamic, unpredictable stochastic demand models, and revenue management teams need to make extremely granular decisions at a speed that is not nearly humanly possible. And decision intelligence is uniquely suited to alleviate this. But from the experience that we are having, Six out of ten revenue managers are still often of the opinion that machine learning can't properly forecast or that I need to keep the control on these rates. But how does the adoption in other industries look like that, is face that are facing similar challenges? Let's have a look at Wall Street. Revenue management work is often no less complex than Wall Street trading finance. Similarly unpredictable, similarly loads of data that goes into it but 60 to 75% of all overall trading volume on Wall Street is algorithmic. Decision intelligence is already making decisions for these industries in frequencies that no human ever could. Wall Street can't live about it, but in hospitality, we're still discussing if it's going to be the next big thing. So we've basically established that technology for decision intelligence is there. It's working right now. Hotels and the hospitality industry are uniquely suited to decision intelligence due to the challenges that we're facing, and other industries are already going all in. That presents an extremely large opportunity. What usually happens in extremely large opportunities? We were hearing it from Benjamin before. We're living in a capitalist society that usually leads to extreme investments. And we can see, actually, that these investments are starting. If we are thinking about our friends at Muse and Apaleo, they've got Apaleo most recently, actually, they got some exciting fundraising because investors are already realizing these are technologies that will enable decision intelligence. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, still the hospitality has one of the lowest investments into tech and digital compared to all other industries. We heard it before as well from Muse. The problem is, what I'm trying to tell you here is I'm not talking about the future. I'm not saying this is the potential that you will have in 2024. This is happening, and it's happening now. We are already seeing hotel groups that have completely adjusted their strategy towards a decision intelligence approach. And they didn't do this the beginning of this year, they did this last year. 
These are the innovators. If you think about the technology adoption curve, right now, from 100 hospitality companies, two or three have really adopted decision intelligence. The next 10%, these will be the early adopters before the early majority catches on. They, they will gain the competitive advantage that decision intelligence can give them the quickest. And they will also have the longest time to ride out the head start that they're having before technologies like this become a commodity and before the later on, like the later majority is starting to play to catch up. That's an extreme opportunity, not just for our industry, but also for your companies, for your career, but for all revenue managers, predominantly also for yourself. It gives you the opportunity to work more strategic, become data literate, because the time really is now. And the one message that I would like to leave you with is that artificial intelligence, it will not replace you. But someone using artificial intelligence and machine learning might. Thank you. And I still got four minutes if there's any questions or we get it started with the panel. We're so far. Ah. Sorry. Any questions from the audience? Yes, please. Could you give a, an example how, 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 how to apply? Yeah, how to apply and the, the what that actually means, means more practical. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, so that, that because I know it's extremely abstract concepts. That's why, why we kind of started with talking about. You know how, we, how it would be in, in a car. You have cruise control, and then you have fully autonomous <coughs> driving. If we think about it from a revenue perspective, think about revenue management systems. So is it like, are you going to be working with systems that you need to set up yourself and that are going to be executing a strategy that you've set up? Or are they going to be applying real machine learning that are going to automatically adjust the strategies based on what's happening in the market and how quickly can they adjust it? That would be, for example, one, one very, like, like an example um, for a real application of it. If you have a system, but you continuously need to adjust it yourself, the system is not learning, you're learning. But if you fail to learn, and if you fail to pick up a change, and we saw this actually at the beginning of COVID, that, that can be a real challenge because the system is actually not adapting to it and it's not adapting the data points that it takes into consideration for these, um, for these decisions. In both your examples, finance and auto, there's a lot of data points. Mm -hmm. Where in revenue management and hotel do you get the data points of a whole market? Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's an extremely good question. I'm actually, the innovation pitch where I'm going to be talking about later, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but that is actually um, part of that as well, because there is this abundance of data points. The question is, how, how should we basically use them? And different systems have different approaches to it. Hmm? The question is, do you need the data points of the whole market? Not really. You just need the data points that send you the best predictive, uh, the best predictive systems. That's now without talking too much about pace revenue specifically, but that's something that we focus on, that we actually can dynamically evaluate which data points give us the best signals. And then we say, let's ingest everything. We're more than happy to ingest everything that's there, but the weighting need to, like the weighting will be different for each specific situation that we're in there. And that can be everything ranging from future booking demand data towards um, like future booking demand data, rate shopping, internal data points, accommodation, like it can basically be everything, market pressure, comparisons, it can be everything. The important thing is not where you get this data from or what data you have, the important thing is how to use that data.